Per usual, everything on this channel is for educational purposes only and is not intended as financial advice. So I know this channel is mainly crypto, um, but I wanted to run through a bunch of Forex pairs and time frames to show you where my head is at, where my mindset is at when I'm using cloud. This is kind of an experiment as far as the video is concerned. If everyone hates it, I won't keep doing it. Um, I do this sort of on my own, so I figured I might as well just put it in video form. If, if it's of any value to anybody, just let me know. If you want me to keep doing this, let me know. If you hate it, let me know. If you, this is your first time watching a video on this channel, keep in mind watching something on 1.5x speed. It's probably much better. Um, if you don't know anything about cloud, watch some of my other videos. I'll link those up. So for simplicity's sake, I put everything, as far as the annotations are concerned, on a separate page on a Google Doc. So I will link that up in the description um, as I'm running through the pairs. I stuck to USD pairs, just a few of them, for simplicity's sake again. Um, I feel like the more focus I have, the better I trade. So if I'm trading like 10 pairs in a week, it's just like too much. So if I run through all the pairs in the beginning of the week and focus on one or two or three, um, usually it ends up being like USD, JPY, odd USD, or Euro USD. So essentially what I'm doing for every pair, every time frame is I'm running the cloud algorithm in my head. Uh, is it above or below cloud? Is the cloud itself bullish or bearish? Is TK cross bullish or bearish? Is lagging span above price, above cloud, below price, below cloud? Do all those parameters match? If they do, that t tells me I should be looking for a trade. If they match up multiple time frames, they tell me that should be that I should be looking for a trade. So you'll see how there's sort of conflicting signals between high and low time frames and how to sort of um, manage that with targets in between in them. So I'm going to keep this whole sheet on a separate screen so I'm not bouncing in between it on the video, but uh, like I said, I'll link it up and you're welcome to check it out. I think it might be valuable for some people. I don't know. We'll see. So odd USD, first pair, as usual, um, high time frame always wins. That's why you start with the higher time frames when you're analyzing stuff. At least that's what I do. That's what most professional traders do. You're better off sticking to higher time frames. Depending on your leverage in Forex, you know, if you're trading 200x or higher, uh, you may or may not need to use higher time frames, whatever. This is just what I'm doing. So if you do something different, let me know. Uh, I'm always looking to learn more about what other people are doing. I'm going to stick to these five time frames, one week, one day, four hour, one hour, and five minute. Uh, in case you don't know, just a quick tip and trick. If you want to leave the time frame up here, you can just star it, and it uh, adds it to the bar there. That way you don't have to click the drop down every time. So here we go, one week, odd USD. Uh, price is in the cloud, which generally means range bound. You'll hear me say that a few times. But we are approaching a Kumo breakout to the downside, which is an entry signal. Uh, there's a bullish TK, and the lagging span is above the price, uh, but not above the cloud. So you can see there's a mixture of signals there. You'll hear me say that a lot. Generally, support on the weekly is 0.732 right here. So what I do is put a horizontal ray right there. That way I know on the lower time frames what to expect. You know, it probably won't go that lower than that. And if it does, that tells me it's going much lower than that. Um, something else I'll be talking about is sort of divergences, if there are any on any time frames. Going down to the daily, uh, everything's bearish, but uh, there is a bear flag building. So it'll probably keep building up to this uh, liquidity area or whatever you want to call it 0.748 um, there's a bit of a TK disequilibrium you can't really see it so I take the price off you can see this shows that it was oversold here and some possible bounce down targets would be this level this 0.7454 uh, due to Kijun and flat Kumo so I'm going to put a resistance line right here. Let's move down to the four hour. You can see bullish cloud in the cloud, so kind of range bound. Uh, bullish TK, kind of a garbly mess, not really much to trade here. Let's take that off there. Um, and again, you know, just based on our support resistance lines, you can see range bound. Um, this flat Kumo equals magnet. 
So even though this flat Kumo is sort of behind the price, it's always considered a magnet, uh, even after, so even over here. And that's uh, confirmed, confluence, whatever, however you want to say it, based on the daily Kijun and flat Kumo. So making it above here is a low probability. Uh, making it to here is somewhat of a higher probability. So what, I'm, what I'd be looking for is a Kumo breakout throughout the week uh, on this four hour. Um, anytime you see a Kumo twist and price approaching the Kumo twist, it sort of says it's a 50-50. It could go either way. So, you know, these are the general range that I'm looking for throughout the week to see uh, if it'll hit. And this is a local low as well. Uh, this zone would be the sort of bear flag target, I guess you could think of it as. On the hourly, uh, I just said range bound. Not really much to say. Just garbly mess. Five minute. Um, five minute was interesting because we sort of have a Kumo breakout below the cloud. Um, you can see the, the uh, TK is still bullish. So the big thing here for me would be waiting until we get a TK recross for confirmation of uh, short. Um, this is another flat Kumo equals magnet zone. So I'm just going to put a line there. So overall, you know, we might get an edge to edge thing or we might get a TK recross down. So that kind of echoes the sentiment on uh, the hour, sorry, four hour, as far as this Kumo twist is concerned. Uh, so it may go either way, one way or the other. I don't know. Obviously, that isn't saying much at the moment, but uh, as the week goes on, as the first day goes on, you can see how that might change. And then again, flat Kumo equals magnet even behind price, so all these are uh, targets for price based on that principle. And why Why are they targets? Because they're 50% retracements uh, at some point of all of this. Again, Cloud wants to be in equilibrium at all times, so it's always looking for the 50% retracement. So my conclusion for odd this week would be high time frame, watch for the bearish continuation for the Kuma breakout down, and then a low time frame, uh, wait and see as far as bearish continuation or bullish uh, reversal, bullish continuation, there's a bear flag, no clear signals, so it depends on the time frame, your leverage, what you want to watch, where you want it to go. Next pair, Euro USD. So this one for me, the question is whether or not it's in a bear channel, whether or not it's hit a triple quad bottom, uh, whether or not this is a bull div that will play out. Uh, I don't know, it's super range bound to me. There's no clear signals. Um, it's definitely below cloud. There's a bullish TK. Bullish TK here. Liking spans below cloud, below price. So there's some bearish confluence. Uh, cloud is bearish. Um, but it probably is worth waiting to see if you get the TK recross on the weekly, which could take months. I think there's a high risk reward for like a low leverage long for long term. Just based on on this. Now, I'm only going to be talking about technicals, not fundamentals, so who knows if fundamentals of Euro are going to be, but that's what it looks like to me. It looks like it's banging on the bottom. Um, you know, if it keeps going, you'd think it would hit this next order block down somewhere in here, like below parity with a dollar. Uh, even this zone here, so parity to 0.97 maybe. Uh, I guess we'll see what comes this week. Uh, daily looks like a super garbly mess. I said stop run city. It's near local lows. It looks like, uh, so Kijun bounce. Anytime that there's a TK disequilibrium like there was here, you can see the Tenkin and the Kijun are super far apart. Anytime you'll see that, you'll want to look for a Kijun bounce, which is where price reaches for the Kijun. If price is below cloud, below the Kijun, you would be looking for shorts, so your short um, you'd want a wick to hit this to short down, bounce down from, which is pretty much what happened. Um, it doesn't always happen directly on the Kijun, but more often than not it does. Um, so again, everything's bearish here. It's a bit garbly. It's questionable bull div. Um, there's, again, just bottomy sort of one, two, three, four, five questionable bottoms. Who knows? Um, uh, not a clear signal for me anyway. Four hour again, near local lows. It's below cloud. The cloud is bullish, bullish TK. 
lagging spans uh, below cloud and price. You can't really see it here. It's right there. So again, no clear signals, nothing really to do as far as a trade is concerned. Um, the hourly is interesting because I consider this a definite bull div, kind of falling wedgy situation. It is below cloud, the cloud is bearish. However, again, this massive TK disequilibrium, which tells you this is super oversold based on this time frame, just to see what that looks like. You can see how far spread that is. So again, you're going to see price reach for this 1.07 because Kijun is equilibrium. It's always trying to be in equilibrium. Another thing, uh, the Kumo twist is here. So this level at this time, so uh, 12, 12, 3 a.m. is an option, which I think that's London open that day. Um, let's turn that back on. So again, this is super oversold, but higher time frames, garbly mess. You may be looking for a sort of counter trend reversal to 50% fib sort of trade real quick. Let's put another um, resistance lines here. Another resistance is always the cloud. So I'll put a, a line there uh, to the five minute. Again, flat Kumo equals magnet. So I'll put a resistance line there. Overall in the five minutes range bound, it's in cloud. Cloud is bullet bearish. TK bullish, lagging span above the price. So no clear signals. It's sort of at the flat Kumo. It's 1.055 level. So I'm just going to put a, a yellow line there. Just telling me that, uh, pay attention to that zone. I can get it. There we go. So overall in the Euro, I said, uh, looking for counter trend trades, consider low leverage, high, long term long or high leverage, short term long, no clear, clear signs. I do like this oversold setup, uh, for a bounce to, uh, this zone throughout, uh, the next few days. Let's jump to GBP USD or as it's more affectionately known cable. Um, I think. <laughs> I'm still trying to get the lingo down. So again, below cloud, cloud is bearish, bearish TK, lagging span is below cloud, below price. So this is a clear, clear bear trend. Um, there is again a TK disequilibrium. Just turn the price off so you can see that. Price will reach, will attempt to reach for the Kijun. So I'm just going to put a line there for the week going to make that red. So probability of going past here on lower time frames, so above here on lower time frames, not very high in my opinion. Moving to the daily, bunch of flat Kumos, prices in the cloud, we have a bullish TK, bearish cloud, sort of range bound, no div necessarily. Uh, it looks like it's trying to pull back up, lagging span above price below cloud. So again, let's make some more notes here for levels. So we have some uh, confluence. And even uh, when you're on higher time frames, because I know this is this zone is super important, um, I sometimes make that thicker. Just to mentally, on lower, when I'm on lower time frames throughout the week, I can see that. Um, so let's go back to this. Ba -ba -doo. And then our support would be at the Kijun at the cloud, which is sort of what it's telling us already. So this, this zone here. So the targets, uh, again, this 135, 1345, this zone especially, I really like as a target. But what you're waiting on is the, you're waiting for cloud to twist bullish and you're waiting for a bullish Kumo twist. Four hour range bound, um, sort of in the cloud, sort of below things. Um, if you want to mark this zone, just based on a flat Kumo as support, uh, not really much to say on the, on the four hour hourly again, below cloud, below price, bearish TK lagging span below cloud and price, um, questionable pull back to this area, just generally a garbly mess, not much to say on the hourly. Uh, five minute, 
range bound as well. So there is a bull div on the hourly, questionable whether or not this will continue. These these are what I the support zones. So you know bids here, or asks here, or long to this level, short to this level. Again, no clear signal. I do like this weekly picture though, just because of the counter trend uh, long to Kijun or short uh, bit asks at this zone here. Uh, Kiwi, I don't know what this one's called, NZD USD. <laughs> Prices in cloud, so it's range bound. Uh, Kumo twist, the bullish, so it, the bullish momentum is building. We have a bullish TK cross. Um, it looks like sort of the edge to edge trade. Uh, so edge to edge is a close in the cloud and a touch on the opposite end of the cloud. Edge to edge plus flat kumo equals magnet sort of trade played out already. Um, but bullish momentum definitely there. Watch for kumo breakout. That's what I'm uh, thinking in the coming months. Daily uh, range bound garbled mess. If you want, you can place some resistance lines here just based on the flat kumo and the key june four hour again range bound no clear signals um cloud is bullish but nothing i can really trade uh, from a risk management perspective um, it may reach for this kumo twist this flat kumo area so let's put a little uh, support there but overall nothing I don't think actionable. Go down to the hourly. So hourly, there was a Kumo breakout. Um, it is pretty far away from the Kijun. So anytime you have a Kumo breakout, you want it close to the Kijun, close to the equilibrium. Uh, this sort of signifies it's a bit oversold. Not much to say. Otherwise, um, there may be a high leverage short to this 709 level. Overall, not much. Five minute is where it starts to get interesting because again, we have this uh, below cloud, below price. Everything's bearish. Cloud is bearish. Um, we have the TK recross on, a, on close. Uh, this may push to a lower order block. We just zoom way out here. Zoom out, zoom out, zoom out. Uh, something like this 711. Let's just put a support here. Again, flat kumo equals magnet, no matter when it happened, where it happened. So that would be the next order block, in my opinion. Uh, so my conclusion for NZD is consider shorting lower time frames, but overall not much else to say. USD CAD's pretty interesting. There's a lot going on on a higher time frame. You really shouldn't look at this without looking at oil. I'm not going to look at oil in this video, but uh, just keep that in mind. They're generally inverse. Um, so kind of a rising wedge picture into resistance. Um, again, Kijun is resistance here, so let's just mark that on the chart. Uh, I've already marked the support zone. Um, based on these wicks, market memory principle. So you, again, here too, you have tons of support in this zone based on the flat Kumo as well. So yes, cloud is bullish, um, but I think what it's experiencing currently is an active edge to edge situation. So it's gonna reach for this liquidity order block, whatever you wanna think of it as, 127, 1285 area. Um, TK is already bearish, so that's a good sign for more down. And then not lagging span is above price, above cloud. So not everything pointing bearish on the weekly. I think that's fine. Uh, overall, though, definitely looking to go lower, I think. Um, and whenever you see this, I'm just going to zoom in on this. I really like these reversal candles, this candle right here. Ba-bam. This uh, spinning top is what it's considered. Um, whenever you see that, especially into some sort of resistance, that's when you want to consider a counter trend reversal trade. Um, you see that on a lot of time frames. Higher time frames always better. Moving to the daily, uh, largely range bound. Again, when you see like this mixture of below the key June, above the cloud, bullish TK, like it's just all all over the place. Nothing substantial. Um, I'm gonna mark. Just a uh, flat Kumo level here, which it already essentially hit. So this may have just been a pullback to this zone. Four hour is super bear. Uh, everything is, all cylinders go for bearish continuation. However, again, we have a bit of a TK disequilibrium. I also 
like these trident wicks as a reversal sign. Again, this is a bit of a spitting top, this candle here. So I'm going to consider uh, a long in this area. There's also somewhat of a questionable bull div, just sort of lower lows, but not a lower uh, RSI. Just says to me that there's a weakening bearish momentum. That coupled with it already being oversold tells me it's going to try to reach for this 133 level. So let's put a resistance marker there. I'm also going to put a resistance here. There's also a Tenkin bounce. You'll see that here, here, here. Uh, so when it's in a super bearish mode, it won't even try to reach for the Kijun. It'll just stop at the Tenkin. Uh, when and why that happens, I don't know, but uh, it's another place we can see like a PRZ potential reversal zone. So one hour, again, everything super bearish. Cloud is bearish. Price is below cloud. Bearish TK. Bearish lagging span. Uh, there is a bull div here. I do like a like short the bounce situation. Uh, even long, long to sort of, you know, this zone based on the higher time frame. Key June. So no clear signals for shorter long here, but uh, I do like this as sort of a bottomy signal on the hourly. And then the five minutes just garbled mass range bound. Moving to USD JPY on the weekly. This is why you pay attention to the Kumo twists, number one. Uh, you can see we reach for that zone. So uh, Kumo twists are sort of a magnet for price to a certain extent. If uh, they're reaching for that zone, I don't really know how to word that better to, for understanding purposes. But, you know, when you're down here, at least when I was actively trading this, thinking, you know, it's not going to hit this zone that's super, super high. There were some fundamental reasons why that happened, some other stuff. So, you know, the cloud knew. Somehow, the cloud knew. So, yes, we have a Kumo breakout, but cloud is bearish. TK is bearish. Lagging span is in the cloud above price, which is okay. Um, I'm just going to mark some zones here as support. The zone and the key June for lower time frames. Okay. Moving to the daily. Massively, massively overbought. I've been saying this for days. Uh, it's kind of amazing it hasn't retraced yet. Uh, you can see like a consolidation thing with RSI just trending above 70. TK disequilibrium. Um, but other than that, all systems are go as far as the trend is concerned. It's just super overbought. Bullish cloud above cloud. Bullish TK cross. Lagging span above cloud above price. Um, and there's also, I'd consider this a growing bear div. Just higher highs continually and a lower high on RSI. Sort of waning bullish momentum. Where this may go higher, tough to say. That just looks really high to me. 120, ugh. But all these zones in here, just mark them. Mark that. So we're kind of knocking on some sort of resistance. We'll see. I'm still looking to short this on this time frame, just based on this TK to C equilibrium. Um, I don't know. We'll see. I basically got bulldozed every time I tried to short this throughout last week. So let's. See if I'll continually get bulldozed. Uh, four hour. Again, everything's go as far as bull trend is concerned. Um, I wouldn't consider this a TK disequilibrium. T TK lines are pretty close. Cloud is bullish. Price is above cloud. Lagging span above cloud above price. So all that's good to go. Um, there's a bear div though. Just like on the higher time frame. Getting higher highs but lower RSI. So it looks tired. Uh, it's also at uh some pivot i think it's a daily pivot daily r1 it's usually a pretty good place for a potential reversal zone so we'll see what happens on open but i really don't see this going much higher which means it'll probably just skyrocket right i'm not in any position at the moment but yeah so there's hourly again all cylinders are go somewhat of a c clamp here you can see we had a three drives uh, lagging span is fine so for bids, you know, you might want to think somewhere in here. Let's just mark that. Mark this. 
you know, so if it breaks this zone, expect it to go down to the lower zone. And then lastly, on five minute, I like this setup for a few reasons short. Um, currently active edge to edge trade, okay. You have a going on bearish DK cross. You have a flat Kumo. So you're looking for a target in here. 115 area. So this is like on open. Cloud is bullish. I don't think it'll keep going down lower. The other thing, there was sort of this ascending triangle that kind of failed. So if you just draw this. Now typically ascending triangles are continuation. But uh, it didn't want to go higher. Failure on patterns is also a good uh, entry signal, at least for me. So the conclusion on UJ, it's super overextended. I'd be, I'd be looking for counter trend trades still. And I'd consider a low time frame short on open. So those are the pairs for the week. Um, if you have any questions about anything, comments, hit me up. Twitter, Telegram, like, dislike, share. I'll put everything in the description below as far as the Google Docs concerned. I'll link up each pair so you can just click to that pair if you want to see it uh, instead of listening to me garble about something you don't care about. And happy trading.